Even when the pieces are in place for a film, nothing is set in stone until the finished product enters theaters. As a project makes the transition from page to screen, there can be multiple revisions as the filmmakers try to get everything right. Sometimes this just means rewriting a few pages of the script, or it can be something more drastic like replacing an actor before shooting. Then there are instances where there has to be a change of director, occasionally when the movie's already in principal photography. It happens more often than you might think. Here are 10 movies that change directors during production. Hi, I'm Scott. And Matt. Fans of Marvel and comedy films in general were excited when it was announced that Edgar Wright, of Scott Pilgrim and the Cornetto trilogy fame, would be calling the shots of the first Ant-Man film. Wright had spent years developing the movie and even shot test footage that impressed the audiences at Comic-Con. But just before it was time to start rolling the cameras, Wright chose to step down, setting creative differences with the studio. Peyton Reed stepped in on late notice and delivered a solidly entertaining movie. Wright still received credit for the screenplay, so at least part of his voice was heard. The Wizard of Oz it's one of the most beloved films of all time now, but back when it was being made, The Wizard of Oz was a nightmare behind the scenes. The project had four directors come in at various points. Richard Thorpe started, but was replaced when the studio felt he was rushing the production. Help! Help! George Cukor ironed things out for a while, and then passed the torch to Victor Fleming. King Vidor had to take over for the final stages of production, when Fleming started working on Gone with the Wind. Despite what definitely should have been too many cooks in the kitchen, The Wizard of Oz went on to earn widespread acclaim. More like it. Gone with the Wind Here's another Hollywood classic that had several issues making its way to the big screen. Originally, George Cukor was at the helm, but he left after disagreements over the pacing and tone. Victor Fleming took the reins, but had to leave shortly after due to exhaustion. Sam Wood was the one who finished the job and ended up delivering one of the greatest movies ever made. It won eight Oscars, including Fleming for Best Director, and is the highest grossing film of all time when adjusted for inflation. What could have been a doomed film became a masterpiece that many enjoyed. The Hobbit Peter Jackson made a name for himself by adapting the Lord of the Rings trilogy to film, but he initially wasn't going to be the one calling the shots on The Hobbit. That honor was going to Guillermo del Toro, who was coming off the hit Pan's Labyrinth. The fan-favorite director spent two years doing pre-production work before he stepped away due to numerous delays. Jackson was the one who took over, and while that sounded good at the time, his decision to stretch The Hobbit from a two-part movie to three turned off a lot of fans. We'll never know what del Toro's version would have looked like, and who knows, it could have been better. Moneyball this small-scale sports film dealt with quite a lot of drama behind the scenes that drastically changed the format of the picture. Originally, director Steven Soderbergh wanted to present Moneyball as a documentary-style film, even shooting interviews with real-life athletes, which didn't make executives happy. You're killing this team. Coming up with a new approach, they brought in Bennett Miller to handle the project as a more straightforward narrative film. Sony had to end up paying two directors and two screenwriters to get the product they wanted, but it paid off as Moneyball was one of 2011's best-reviewed films. Ratatouille Brad Bird gave fans a wonderful superhero tale in The Incredibles, and it turns out the director is something of a superhero himself. When Pixar was developing Ratatouille, Jan Pinkava was originally on board to direct, but the studio was concerned his version didn't have a strong chance to be commercially successful. This can't just happen! Pinkava was removed from the project and replaced by Bird, who had just 18 months to completely overhaul several aspects of the film. Luckily, Bird cracked the winning formula, and the Ratatouille that was released became his second massive hit for Pixar and won an Oscar for Best Animation animated film. Superman 2 Long before the shared universe phenomenon, director Richard Donner was planning multiple installments of his Superman series. His plan was to shoot the first two films of the franchise at the same time, and he made his way through 75% of the production on Superman 2 before he had to focus on post for the first film. Even though 1978 Superman was a hit, Donner was kicked off the sequel due to budgetary and tone concerns. Richard Lester took over with the intention of making the movie lighter and campier. It was a controversial decision, and Gene Hackman refused to take part in Lester's reshoots. Superman 2 was successful, but the debate over which version is better will never end. Spartacus All legends get their start somewhere, and Stanley Kubrick had his first big shot at fame thanks to Kirk Douglas. While filming Spartacus, Douglas, who was also executive producer on the film, felt that original director Anthony Mann was overwhelmed by the scope of the project and unfit to bring it to the screen. He made the decision to replace Mann with Kubrick, even though Spartacus would be Kubrick's most expansive production at the time. Nevertheless, Douglas's judgment proved correct, and Kubrick helmed a standout entry in the swords and sandals genre, launching a career full of ambitious and large ideas. Layer Cake Guy Ritchie's calling card is the slick British crime film, and he could have had another one under his belt if the original plan for Layer Cake had stayed in place. Ritchie was going to helm the film, but he had to step away as he was dealing with the aftermath of his flop swept away and trying to save his marriage to pop star Madonna. Ritchie left his friend Matthew Vaughn to take over, and Vaughn used the film to announce himself as a filmmaking force. He's helmed such hits as X-Men First Class and Kingsman in the years since, and star Daniel Craig went on to headline four James Bond films following his performance. 
The Legend of Tarzan Veteran Harry Potter director David Yates remained on this reboot throughout production, but troubles began once the film entered post. According to reports last year, Yates had begun filming Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them before Tarzan was complete. Though Warner Brothers was concerned with the quality of Tarzan, they wouldn't pull Yates off Fantastic Beasts since the Harry Potter spin-off is the greater priority for them. The studio maintains all as well, but it's really an unusual situation. Typically, directors will make sure one movie's in the bag before moving on to the next one. Hopefully both of Yates' 2016 efforts are memorable. These are just some of the films that had to change their director before they hit their premiere. Are there any we missed? Let us know in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun videos like this one.